Hi everyone. I am enjoying the low maintenance nature of the filming setup here. So I do really like my backdrop that I use a lot of the time, but this is really nice. And I now have a tripod so I can just kind of put the camera wherever I want and I'll be doing it here. Um, I don't know, you know, how many videos I'll be doing it for, but I just felt like being low key for today. And I wanted to talk about my April reading plans. Now I usually don't put up a TBR of sorts unless there is a readathon. So I am participating in one readathon, but then also I had a very specific plan for my reading in the month of April. And I am going to be doing spring cleaning of my Goodreads currently reading shelf which one of my goals for this year was to have it down to five and keep it at five, you know, throughout the year. And I haven't worked on that. So I still have, I think I have around 20 books in my currently reading folder and I want to change that. So, um, what order do I want to do this in? Uh, I think, I guess I'll talk about the readathon that's being hosted by Katie from Books and Things is a TBR clear out readathon. There are no challenges. It is incredibly casual and it's just to read books that are on your shelves that you haven't gotten to yet. Books that you own and that you've been wanting to get to. And the first is one that I own on Audible and I want to read Lady Anna by Anthony Trollope. Um, so I will show the picture real quick. And this is Lady Anna. And it's one that's also on my like Victober five star TBR predictions. I know Ange from Beyond the Pages really liked it. She read it last Victober. Um, and it says that Lady Anna records the lifelong attempt of Countess Lovell to justify her claim to her title and her daughter Anna's legitimacy. After her husband announces that he already has a wife, Anna falls in love with the journeyman Taylor and young radical Daniel Thwaite, but her mother wishes to marry her to marry her cousin, heir to her father's title. Um, and so I think it just has a lot to do with class, like so many different Victorian novels out there. And it seems one that I definitely am really excited to get to, especially that's nice. It's an audiobook format. Um, then, okay, the ones that... Um, I have here physically that I also was hoping to get to. One is a buddy read, so that's a guaranteed that I'll get to it. And hopefully I love it and don't DNF it. And I will be reading, it's my very first buddy read with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts. I'm really excited about this. And we're going to be reading Love in a Cold Climate by Nancy Mitford. If any of you watched my giant TBR stack for the year, this is one that was in that TBR stack. So having a fun buddy read and slowly getting through that TBR stack um, and once I get through the first six in that stack, like I put like a little mini stack down on my book dresser down here. And so once I get through the six there, um, then I will do like a TBR stack update video. Um, but I have a couple more that I need to get through. And then, um, one I really struggled with and what's so sad is in the process of reading it, the cover came off of Hester by Margaret Oliphant. So there will not be a video going up for Hester, unfortunately, at the beginning of April, because I only made it a um, hundred pages. This this year has been so close to a reading slump so much of the year, and I really had to step away from it. But Christy Lewis, if you are watching, you have made me really reconsider trying it now um, and not under a time crunch. Maybe I was just feeling the pressure. Uh, and yeah, I just, I really, Christy has put up so many funny quotes from it. So I want to keep going with it. I'm hoping that it's one that maybe if I stick with it, I'll love. I'm worried it's one though that the writing style just doesn't suit me. We'll see when I keep reading. Okay, then I picked up a really nice, you guys know I love a big floppy paperback, Labyrinth by Kate Moss. Kate Moss is an author I've heard a lot about, not the model, somebody else, and I want to try her. And this is uh, just, uh, it's kind of like, I feel like it, if you like Susanna Kearsley, oh, look at the shimmery foil on the cover. If you like Susanna Kearsley, then it seems like you could like Kate Moss. And someone in the year 2005 is in the Pyrenees Mountains. She is at an archaeological dig and she makes a discovery of two crumbling skeletons and strange writings on the wall and the pattern of a labyrinth. And then it goes back to the year 1200 and or I guess 1205 if we're going 800 years back. It is just under or just around 500 pages. So I'm hoping it's one I could like. If not, 
I can donate it to the library bookstore and when the library is open again um, and it can go to a home where it will be well loved. But I wanted to try Kate Moss for a while and I loved that there was just this huge chunky paperback of it. Um, then don't want to, you know, I put in Lady Anna and I just want to make sure I don't neglect my Victorian reading throughout the year. And um, so I'll be reading Dear Book over April and May. I lost my train of thought there. But also I picked up Kim by Rudyard Kipling. I ordered this last October when I was ordering a bunch of Victorian literature and I would like to give this a try. I've, I really enjoyed The Jungle Books by Rudyard Kipling, but I haven't read anything else. Uh, so this is one that I know Emma from Bookish Princess really liked and I'm looking forward to it. Plus I love this edition. Um, then I have not read from the Adam Dalgleish detective series by P.D. James for a while. So this is the second in the series, A Mind to Murder. Um, and so it's when the administrative head of the Steen Psychiatric Clinic is found dead with a chisel in her heart. Superintendent Adam Dalgleish of Scotland Yard is called in to investigate. Um, he must analyze the deep-seated anxieties and thwarted desires of patients and staff alike to determine which of their unresolved conflicts resulted in murder. Anytime I've like read a detective fiction that's set in a psychiatric ward or have watched it on the TV, it has the most like unique plots to it. And there's always corruption in the staff. Like, I don't know if that's great representation, but it does make for very interesting plots. So that appeals to me. And um, then I'm tired of telling people I want to read this book. I'm tired of not being able to say I've read it. So Waterfalls of Stars, Roseanne Alexander. This is among the like nonfiction booktube community is very well loved and I want to read it. And then one that was recommended or an author that was recommended in um, Honey for a Woman's Heart, which is just a book about great books, is the author is Linda M. Hasselstrom. And this is Gathering from the Grassland, a Plains journal. And it is just a day-to-day -day journal of this woman who lives on a farm in South Dakota. And it's just supposed to be really well-written and interesting, just fascinating. And um, I've heard she has a lot of great, great books. And the, the press is High Plains Press. Um, so I think that is an indie press uh, for like a very specific kind of book. And I'm really looking forward to trying this. So shall we very quickly run through the books. This is just embarrassing everyone. Okay. The books that are on my currently reading folder. Okay. The first is Leaving Everything Most Loved, which is the 10th Maisie Dobbs. And that one I'll finish very soon. That doesn't feel daunting to me. Then that one I'm kind of bummed about is Eight Cousins by Louisa May Alcott. I started it and I am someone who really like loves variety in my reading. And I am one of the hosts of the year of Louisa May. And I just, I messaged Megan. I was like, I'm really sorry. I just need to take a break from it because it felt similar, too similar to the previous Louisa May books. So I kind of wish I had been more strategic and I think like her book Work and her book Hospital Sketches would be very different um, and would have been some good variety. But alas, what can you do? So hopefully later in the month, it'll feel less I don't know, intimidating. Um, then Pippi Goes on Board by Astrid Lindgren. That's a read aloud I'm doing with my son. And we have one chapter left. Uh, one I'm very excited about, and one of my goals this year was to read more French literature. So I have Cousin Bette by um, Honoré de Balzac. And is it Honoré? I think that's how you say it. But I was re I'm really, really enjoying it whenever I pick it up. So that one does not feel daunting. Then Knife of Dreams, the 11th Wheel of Time book. Doris and I, we are championing through this series. Um, and I'm doing this via audiobook. Very confident I will get through that. An Heir to Murder by Booktube's own Charles Heathcote. My lack of, or rather, what, how do I want to say this? Like, I was really enjoying this. That's not why this is still in my currently reading folder. It's that I read it right before middle grade March got started and I was like, Ah, middle grade March. So it did this nothing against um, an air tremor. I was thoroughly enjoying it. So I can't wait to pick it up again. Um, then I have The Fellowship of the Ring uh, by Tolkien. And this is for the Lord of the Readathon this year. And um, I, yeah, this month I should be starting The Two Towers. So I have those all on audio and those will just be a treat once I get around to them. 
Um, then I'm reading Confessions by Augustine. And um, I am really, really enjoying this. I just got sidetracked with my morning routine. So I definitely want to get back to this, especially because there's another Christian nonfiction book that I really want to get to after this one I heard about from my dad called The Revenge of Conscience. It sounds so interesting, but I don't want to have two Christian nonfiction on the go because I feel like that will make me feel extra intimidated. Um, then if you've been watching me at all or following me on social media, you know I am rereading Wives and Daughters. So that's a lovely one that I savor. And since um, the like my husband has been working from home, a nice silver lining is every single morning he takes the boys for a walk when they get up. So every single morning, that means that I've been sipping my coffee and reading a chapter of Wives and Daughters. It is a very nice system. So that's a really nice silver lining. Um, then I have The Storm Sister by Lucinda Riley. I own this on audio and physical copy. Um, I have this stupid, totally self-inflicted rule I do for myself. Um, and that is that I... These more treaty reads like Lucinda Riley or Cozy Mysteries, I feel like I should just wait to treat myself. And then I end up just looking at social media or watching TV instead of reading. Um, and so I just want to either pick to watch TV or just read what I want to read. Uh, then Flowers in the Rain and Other Stories by Rosamund Pilcher. I was loving this when I read it. They're Rosamund Pilcher short stories. It was lovely. Uh, I read only like the first five pages of A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr. Um, liked what I read and then got sidetracked. Uh, Meadowland, The Private Life of an English Field by John Lewis Stemple. Don't know why I stopped reading it. The Virago Book of Victorian Ghost Stories. I really want to um, make an effort and maybe I'll just pick like a story a day. Uh, and then Elizabeth Gaskell's biography, Elizabeth Gaskell, A Habit of Stories by Jenny Yuglo. Um, really, really want to complete reading this because I loved it when I did read it. And then before I finish that, though, I wanted to read Cousin Phyllis by Elizabeth Gaskell because there, there's a chapter for each of her novels in her biography and it gives major spoilers. And Cousin Phyllis is a novella, but it's one of the ones that has spoilers for it. So I wanted to read Cousin Phyllis before I read that chapter in the biography. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 am I currently reading. Am I proud of this? No, I am not proud of this. So I just thought, why don't I have a month where I just do spring cleaning in there? And, um, and then this TBR clear out. So some responsible reading, much needed. And I hope I just have some new favorites out of the month or I decide it's not for me and it goes to somebody else eventually when they, when they pick it up at a used bookstore. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the books that I'm hoping to get through and slash finish in the month of April. Let me know what you are hoping to read. I hope you're all doing really well and are finding joy in books or um, delicious food or um, wonderful TV and movies in this really hard time for everyone. Please stay healthy and thank you to anyone. If any doctors or nurses or um, mail carriers, anybody like that, people who work in stock rooms, people who work in grocery stores, if any of you are watching, thank you so much um, for what you're doing in this time. And I will be back for another video soon. Bye.